Sylvia Nassar, A Beautiful Mind. Welcome to the enthralling journey of John Nash, a mathematical prodigy whose life is chronicled in Sylvia Nassar's A Beautiful Mind. In this book summary, you can look forward to exploring Nash's early life, his impactful work in game theory, and the challenging downturn of his mental health as he battles paranoid schizophrenia. As you navigate through his experiences at Princeton and MIT, uncover how his unique breakthroughs in the field of mathematics impact the broader realms of economics, war, and business strategies. Unraveling John Nash's Genius John Nash, a prodigious mathematician, was born on June 13, 1928, in Bluefield, West Virginia. Growing up as a socially awkward child, he always cherished books over people. It was during his early teenage years that Nash began displaying signs of his extraordinary mathematical aptitude. By the time he entered college, Nash initially aimed to follow in his father's footsteps and pursue engineering, but his unquenchable passion for mathematics ultimately led him to switch majors and reshape his destiny. In the small town of Bluefield, West Virginia, the seeds of greatness were planted on June 13, 1928, with the birth of John Nash. His father, an electrical engineer, and mother, a schoolteacher, provided a comfortable life for their prodigious child. Despite minimal information about his childhood, it was evident that Nash's exceptional intellect marked him distinct from others. Nash's social struggles during his elementary years were significant enough for his parents to become concerned. In an effort to improve his social skills, they enrolled him in Sunday school and Boy Scouts, but these endeavors didn't bring much change. Around the age of 13 or 14, Nash's extraordinary mathematical prowess surfaced, inspired by E. T. Bell's Men of Mathematics, a book about the lives of great mathematicians. Despite receiving a B- in fourth grade math, John Nash showcased a unique ability to solve complex problems in his head through unconventional methods. This trait followed him into high school, setting the stage for his mathematical journey. Initially, Nash aimed to emulate his father by pursuing an engineering career, earning a full scholarship to study at the Carnegie Institute of Technology, now Carnegie Mellon University, in Pittsburgh. However, he quickly grew weary of lab experiments and mechanical drawing, finding joy solely in mathematics. Nash's revolutionary problem-solving methods left his math professors in awe, prompting them to encourage him to change majors during his second year. With this decision, John Nash's extraordinary destiny as one of the greatest mathematical minds of the 20th century was finally set in motion. Princeton's Unconventional Math Genius A young prodigy named Nash had a wealth of opportunities in prestigious graduate schools, but ultimately chose Princeton due to its generous scholarship offer. Princeton's mathematical culture presented a perfect environment for Nash to develop his intellectual abilities. From its prestigious reputation to its academic freedom, Princeton challenges students to grow, while also encouraging collaboration during informal tea gatherings where ideas are shared. Nash embraced the unconventional nature of Princeton's mathematics program, never attending a single class and instead pondering mathematical problems while wandering the hallways. Despite his disliked habit of whistling box fugues and initial lack of popularity, Nash remained a sole wanderer, choosing not to form cliques or affiliations with professors, in order to maintain independent thought. His decision to distance himself from potential negative influences was perceived by many as antisocial behavior. However, this perception changed when Nash invented a strategic board game that captured the attention of his peers. The game, later known as Nash or Hex, became popular in university common rooms and marked the beginning of his fascination with game theory, a mathematical domain that would ultimately define his career. Unraveling Nash's Game Theory At Princeton, John Nash expanded upon John von Neumann's revolutionary yet limited game theory. Rather than focusing on two-player, zero-sum games, Nash explored mathematical models to capture rational human decision-making in scenarios involving cooperation and conflict. His groundbreaking doctoral thesis tackled the complex realm of non-zero-sum games, enabling applications of game theory in real-world situations like economics. 
Nash's groundbreaking discovery of distinguishing between cooperative and non-cooperative games allowed for the determination of rational human behavior based on mutual gain. His Nash equilibrium concept, which represents the optimal strategic choice given the best response of opponents, ultimately led to his Nobel Prize recognition. The eccentric genius at MIT. Despite facing hurdles in his career due to his misanthropic and eccentric nature, the brilliant mathematician John Nash was able to secure a position at MIT. Although unpopular with students, he began to form a social life and develop friendships in Boston. His unconventional relationship with nurse Eleanor Steer led to the birth of his first child, who ended up in foster care due to Nash's unwillingness to marry Steer or financially support their child. John Nash was a mathematical prodigy whose groundbreaking thesis earned him widespread recognition but couldn't secure him a professorship at his dream institution, Princeton. Due to his misanthropic demeanor and eccentric nature, teaching wasn't an ideal fit. However, Nash soon landed a position at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, in 1951, hoping to eventually obtain tenure. At MIT, Nash's peculiarities continued to stand out, making him an unpopular figure among students. His hard-to-follow lectures and infamously challenging exams led to some students attempting to create a Hate John Nash Day. Despite the animosity, Nash started building a social life in Boston. He frequented cafes, restaurants, and beer halls, forming companionships and, in one case, an intellectual connection with fellow mathematician Donald Newman. Boston marked a turning point in Nash's personal life as well, as he entered his first relationship with nurse Eleanor Steer, whom he met during a hospital stay. Their clandestine relationship resulted in Steer giving birth to their child. However, Nash, likely considering himself intellectually superior to Steer, never proposed marriage, bucking social norms. Unable to help Steer financially, their child, John David Steer, ended up in foster care during his early years. While Nash did visit his son and Steer, her hopes for a future marriage remained unfulfilled. Nash's eccentricities, while integral to his genius, also created challenges in both his professional and personal life. Tangled Love Triangle In the 1950s, John Nash, a mathematical genius and professor, juggled an on-again, off-again relationship with Eleanor Steer, with whom he had a son, and a blossoming romance with Alicia Lard, an academically gifted and upper-class physics student at MIT. While his relationship with Steer deteriorated, Nash and Lard became closer, ultimately leading to Steer discovering them together in bed. This event compelled Steer to inform Nash's parents about their grandchild and to demand child support. Eventually, Nash chose to move forward with Lard, starting a new chapter in their lives as a married couple in Manhattan's Upper East Side. The journey toward this choice was fraught with challenges and potentially devastating consequences for both women involved and Nash's career. Chasing the Riemann Hypothesis Nearing 30 years old and feeling the pressure of not securing tenure or producing major mathematical advancements, Nash decided to tackle the enigmatic Riemann Hypothesis. While devoting himself to this formidable task, the revelation of his wife's pregnancy heightened his anxieties. Nash's behavior became increasingly peculiar, including sudden stock market obsessions and paranoia towards his colleagues. Initially interpreted as an offbeat joke or momentary eccentricity, an unsettling realization emerged, Nash's mental state was deteriorating, and he was unraveling before his peers. The Emperor of Antarctica it was a critical moment in Nash's life, on the verge of receiving tenure at MIT and being offered a reputable professorship at the University of Chicago. But, due to his quickly deteriorating mental health, he declined the latter, stating he had become the emperor of Antarctica. Concerned, Alicia had Nash admitted to a psychiatric hospital, where he was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. After a brief forced treatment, Nash seemed to recover, but it was a facade, and he left for Europe with Alicia and their newborn son in tow. Once there, Nash revealed his true intentions, unsuccessfully trying to surrender his American passport and attain world citizenship in his relentless delusions of grandeur. Nash's Struggles and Solitude After a year-long ordeal, John Nash was deported back to the United States, 
but his mental health did not improve. Caught in a relentless cycle of institutionalization, medication, and relapse, Nash's marriage eventually ended in divorce during the early 60s. Although they still saw each other, Nash's relationship with Alicia was fraught with emotional turbulence. With no steady income, Nash relied on loved ones until ultimately seeking solitude at his alma mater, Princeton. There, he wandered the halls of the mathematics department, leaving mysterious messages on blackboards, earning the nickname Phantom of Fine Hall. As a result, Nash became a cautionary tale for those who dared to challenge the unsolvable in mathematics. Nash's Miraculous Recovery John Nash's gradual recovery from paranoid schizophrenia was nothing short of a miracle, happening in stages throughout the 1980s and 1990s. Mathematicians at Princeton noticed that his work shifted from incomprehensible numerology to actual mathematics. In the early 1990s, Nash's ability to engage in lucid conversations improved. This personal progress coincided with academic recognition for his earlier work on game theory, eventually leading to a Nobel Prize in economics in 1994. After nearly three decades, Nash re-entered academia as a professor at Princeton and spent his remaining years reconnecting with loved ones. In 2001, Nash and Alicia remarried, spending the rest of their lives together in Princeton. As we conclude our summary of A Beautiful Mind, we have traced the incredible odyssey of John Nash's life. Against all odds, Nash overcame his debilitating struggles with mental illness, eventually making a miraculous recovery and being awarded the Nobel Prize in Economics. Delving into his groundbreaking work in game theory and the Nash equilibrium, we uncover how his profound insights revolutionized the understanding of cooperative human behavior. Sylvia Nassar's compelling portrayal of Nash's life story not only invites us to marvel at his unwavering determination, but also serves as an inspiration to those who battle with their own inner demons.